BBC Two is the second flagship television channel of the British Broadcasting Corporation in the United Kingdom, the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands. It covers a wide range of subject matter, but tends to broadcast more highbrow programs than the more mainstream and popular BBC One. Like the BBC's other domestic TV and radio channels, it is funded by the television license, and is therefore free of commercial advertising. It is a comparatively well-funded public service network, regularly attaining a much higher audience share than most public service networks worldwide. Originally styled BBC Two, it was the third British television station to be launched starting on 21 April 1964, and from 1 July 1967, Europe's first television channel to broadcast regularly in colour. It was envisaged as a home for less mainstream and more ambitious programming, and while this tendency has continued to date, most special interest programs of a kind previously broadcast on BBC Two, for example the BBC Proms, now tend to appear on BBC Four instead. Topic. History Topic. Launch British television at the time of BBC Two's launch consisted of two channels, the BBC Television Service and the ITV network made up of smaller regional companies. Both channels had existed in a state of competition since ITV's launch in 1955, and both had aimed for a populist approach in response. The 1962 Pilkington Report on the Future of Broadcasting noticed this, and that ITV lacked any culturally relevant programming. It therefore decided that Britain's third television station should be awarded to the BBC. Prior to its launch, the new BBC Two was promoted on the BBC television service, the soon to be renamed BBC One. The animated adverts featured the campaign mascots, Hullabaloo, a mother kangaroo, and Custard. Her Joey. Prior to, and several years after, the channel's formal launch, the channel broadcast trade test transmissions. Short films made externally by companies such as Shell and BP, which served to enable engineers to test reception, but became cult viewing. The channel was scheduled to begin at 19.20 on 20 April 1964, showing an evening of light entertainment, starting with the comedy show The Alberts, a performance from Soviet comedian Arkady Rykin, and a production of Cole Porter's Kiss Me, Kate, culminating with a fireworks display. However, at around 1845 a huge power failure, originating from a fire at Battersea Power Station, caused Television Centre, and indeed much of West London, to lose all power. BBC One was able to continue broadcasting via its facilities at Alexandra Palace, but all attempts to show the scheduled programmes on the new channel failed. Associated Rediffusion, the London weekday ITV franchise holder, offered to transmit on the BBC's behalf, but their gesture was rejected. At 2200 programming was officially postponed until the following morning. As the BBC's news centre at Alexandra Palace was unaffected, they did in fact broadcast brief bulletins on BBC Two that evening, beginning with an announcement by the newsreader Gerald Priestland at around 1925. There was believed to be no recording made of this bulletin, but a videotape was discovered in early 2003. By 11 o'clock on 21 April, power had been restored to the studios and programming began, thus making Play School the first program to be shown officially on the channel. The launch schedule, postponed from the night before, was then successfully shown that evening, albeit with minor changes. In reference to the power cut, the transmission opened with a shot of a lit candle which was then sarcastically blown out by presenter Dennis Toohey. To establish the new channel's identity and draw viewers to it, the BBC decided that a widely promoted, lavish series would be essential in its earliest days. The production chosen was The Foresight Saga 1967, a no-expense spared adaptation of the novels by John Galsworthy, featuring well-established actors Kenneth Moore and Eric Porter. Critically for the future of the fledgling channel, the BBC's gamble was hugely successful, with an average of 6 million viewers tuning in per episode, a feat made more prominent by the fact that only 9 million were able to receive the channel at the time.
Topic: Technological advancements. Unlike BBC One and ITV, BBC Two was broadcast only on the 625-line UHF system, so was not available to viewers still using sets on the 405-line VHF system. This created a market for dual-standard receivers which could switch between the two systems. Set manufacturers ramped up production of UHF sets in anticipation of a large market demand for the new BBC Two, but the market did not materialize. The early technical problems, which included being unable to transmit U.S. recorded videotapes due to a lack of system conversion from the U.S. NTSC system, were resolved by a committee headed by James Redmond. On 1 July 1967, during the Wimbledon Championships, BBC Two became the first channel in Europe to begin regular broadcasts in color, using the PAL system. The 13-part series Civilization 1969 was created as a celebration of two millennia of Western art and culture to showpiece the new color technology. BBC One and ITV later joined BBC Two on 625-line UHF band, but continued to simulcast on 405-line VHF until 1985. BBC One and ITV simultaneously introduced PAL Color on UHF on 15 November 1969, although they both had broadcast some programs in color, and officially, since September 1969. In 1979, the station adopted the first computer-generated channel identification IDENT, in Britain, with its use of the double-striped, orange, 2, logo. The IDENT, created in-house by BBC engineers, lasted until March 1986 and heralded the start of computer-generated logos. As the switch to digital-only terrestrial transmission progressed, BBC Two was, in each region in turn, the first analog TV channel to be replaced with the BBC Multiplex, at first four, then two weeks ahead of the other four channels. This was required for those relay transmitters that had no current freeview service giving viewers time to purchase the equipment, unless they had already selected a satellite or cable service. The last region for BBC Two to end on analog terrestrial television was Northern Ireland on 10 October 2012. At the 2012 Edinburgh International Television Festival, BBC Two was named Terrestrial Channel of the Year. A high-definition simulcast of BBC Two began broadcasting on 26 March 2013, replacing the standalone BBC HD channel. As of 29 November 2018, there are three variations of BBC Two HD Wales, Northern Ireland, and England. Topic operation The channel controllers have been, 1964-1965, Michael Peacock 1965-1969, David Attenborough 1969-1974, Robin Scott 1974-1978, Aubrey Singer 1978-1982, Brian Wenham 1982-1987, Graham MacDonald 1987-1992, Alan Yentob 1992-1996, Michael Jackson 1996 to 1999, Mark Thompson 1999 to 2004, Jane Root 2004 to 2008, Rolly Keating 2008 to 2014, Janice Hadlow 2014 to 2016, Kim Schillinglaw 2017 present, Patrick Hollandedam Barker served as acting controller of the channel after Janice Hadlow left the channel in March 2014 and until Kim Schillinglaw began as new permanent occupant of the post. Since 2013, the controller of BBC Two has been given the expanded title controller of BBC Two and BBC Four, with ultimate oversight of the BBC Four service added to their duties. A BBC Four channel editor, reporting up to this controller, has day-to-day -day operational control of Four. The channel forms part of the BBC Television Executive Group, and is answerable to the head of that department, and to the BBC Trust. On 20 January 2016, Kim Schillinglaw announced that she has decided to leave the BBC as the controller of BBC Two and BBC Four and, as a result of the reorganization, the posts of controller of BBC Two and Four have been closed. Patrick Holland became channel controller of BBC Two in March 2017, following his earlier appointment as channel editor in July 2016.
Topic. Programming BBC Two's remit is to be a mixed genre channel appealing to a broad adult audience with programs of depth and substance. It should carry the greatest amount and range of knowledge-building programming of any BBC television channel, complemented by distinctive comedy, drama and arts programming. BBC Two's remit historically was one screening programs targeting the arts, culture, some comedy and drama, and appealing to audiences not already served by BBC One or ITV. Over its first 30 or so years the channel developed a reputation for screening highly praised and prestigious drama series, among these boys from the Black Stuff 1982 or 1996's, critically acclaimed Our Friends in the North. The channel's highbrow Profile is also in part attributable to a long history of demanding documentaries of all types, beginning with Civilization and the Ascent of Man in the 1960s. Like the early Channel 4, BBC Two also established for itself a reputation as a champion of independent and international cinema, under the Screen 2 brand. The channel has sometimes been judged, increasingly in more recent years, to have moved away from this original role and closer to the mainstream. Since the launch of the digital-only BBC4, the BBC has been accused in particular of shifting its more highbrow output to the new channel, which, until the end of the UK's digital TV switchover in October 2012, a minority 7.5% in the final quarter of 2010, of viewers did not receive. BBC FA's remit is very similar to that of the earlier remit of BBC2, and contains many documentaries and arts programmes. It has been perceived by some that this strategy is to allow BBC Two to show more popular programs and to secure higher ratings. Since 2004 there have been some signs of an attempt to return closer to parts of BBC Two's earlier output with the arts strand The Culture Show. Its most popular program at the moment is Top Gear. Much of BBC Two's output has previously or subsequently been shown on other channels. Some of these programs are repeats of popular or flagship programs from BBC4 in a late night strand, originally called BBC4 on 2 but now in branded, for the benefit of audiences without access to BBC4. Other programs are moved to the channel as a result of their success on BBC3 or 4, so that subsequent series are well received. An example of this is the BBC3 series Torchwood that was transferred to the channel following the success of the first series. BBC2 is also used as a testing ground for programs prior to their moving to the flagship BBC1. Such examples include Have I Got News for You and popular comedies Absolutely Fabulous and Miranda, which moved to BBC1 after success on 2. Also in August 2014 The Great British Bake Off moved to BBC One due to its success the previous year on BBC Two. Another founding part of BBC Two was to provide educational and community programming on the BBC, as part of its public service remit. The educational section of this commitment saw BBC Two broadcast a large amount of programming for the Open University, who co-produced programming with the corporation, and saw the channel broadcast BBC Schools programs from 1983 until the programs were transferred to the BBC Learning Zone in 2010. As a result of the channel's commitment to community broadcasting, the channel produced the Symbolic Open Space series, a strand developed in the early 1970s in which members of the public would be allotted half an hour of television time, and given a level of editorial and technical training in order to produce for themselves a film on an issue most important to them. BBC Two's community program unit kept this aspect of the channel's tradition alive into the 1990s in the form of Video Diaries and later Video Nation. The community programs unit was disbanded in 2004. Since January 2013, BBC Two stopped showing children's programs and replaced the weekday morning schedule with repeats of the previous BBC One daytime schedule. They also started showing Sign Zone in the early hours, which BBC One used to show before 2013. From October 2013, BBC Two has shown classic programs like Bergerac, Cagney and Lacey, The Rockford Files, Allo, Allo, and Are You Being Served? On weekday afternoons, with the retro logos from 1970s and 1980s, between the current programs. 
In October 2014, Russell Howard's Good News and Backchat moved to BBC Two from BBC Three. In 2014, BBC Two commissioned Britain's first transgender sitcom, Boy Meets Girl, which follows the developing relationship between Leo, a 26-year-old man and Judy, a 40-year-old transgender woman. From 7 April 2015, The Morning Sign Zone was shown before Victoria Derbyshire between 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. including See Here on Wednesday morning. From 2017 until 2019, it broadcast the UK selection show for the Eurovision Song Contest, Eurovision, You Decide. The channel stopped broadcasting the show after the 2019 edition due to the fact that the BBC opted for an internal selection in collaboration with BMG Rights Management. Topic. Presentation. As well as programs, BBC Two has also proved memorable for its numerous idents. Various short sequences shown between program junctions that serve as the channel identity. Nearly all of the identity packages used since the channel's launch in 1964 have featured a prominent numeral 2 in the design. Notable designs include the electronic double-striped 2, the white 2 ident, the only ident not to use a numeral 2, and most notably the 1991 2s. The 1991 idents featured a sans-serif numeral 2 at the center of an initially art-related scene, however the idents moved away from this style as the station's style changed. Although highly praised, this expansive set of idents was ended in November 2001. The BBC corporate logo was updated within the IDENTS in October 1997, though the IDENTS moved away from the original Viridian color scheme in these latter years. The subsequent presentation style was introduced on 19 November 2001 and kept the same figure too, but in a yellow background and given a personality. At the time, BBC Two became the first BBC channel to feature a box logo. In 2007, BBC Two debuted the new theme, a window on the world, with the two numeral providing that view. Introduced on 18 February 2007, the new look also had the channel adopt a teal-colored box logo, featuring the BBC logo above the word Two, in the font Avenir. In 2014, in honor of the channel's 50th anniversary, some of the 1990s idents were reintroduced and from 2015, BBC Two Northern Ireland opted to use nearly 40 idents from the 1991-2001 set. On 27 September 2018, the 1991-2001 idents were retired once again and BBC Two introduced a new set of idents, based on scenes incorporating a curve motif resembling the number two. The new branding is designed to reflect BBC Two's constant evolution, constant eclecticism, and constant sense of quality. The new idents are produced by various artists and studios, including Ardman Animations, The Mill and others. The new identity was co-developed by BBC Creative and Superunion. Topic. Regional variations BBC Two also has regional variations in Wales and Northern Ireland. These versions of BBC Two share the same idents, but with the nation name in the BBC Two box. BBC Two Scotland showed a lot of specifically Scottish programming on the channel, as well as its sister channel BBC One Scotland, and the schedules were often mixed around to match. BBC Two Northern Ireland and BBC Two Wales both have the option to opt out of the main network schedule, but generally stick to it, only opting out a couple of times each week. Until December 2008, BBC Wales broadcast a special, digital-only channel, BBC Two W, which contained more opt-outs than analogue-only BBC Two Wales. BBC Two Scotland existed until February 2019 when it was replaced with the national BBC Two feed in preparation for the launch of the BBC Scotland channel. In England, many of the BBC English regions were combined to form super regions, such as the entire North or Midlands. These had the option to opt out of the network programming on the analogue feed, and replace it with local programming. 
However this was usually only done in exceptional circumstances, as all regular regional programming has been transferred to BBC One, and the English regions are not available on digital on BBC Two. There is no specific BBC Two England. This role is fulfilled by the network version of BBC Two. Topic. Availability outside the UK BBC Two is widely available in the Republic of Ireland on satellite and cable, as well as being received directly in areas bordering Northern Ireland, or in coastal areas from Wales. It is also available on cable and IPTV in the Netherlands, Belgium, Switzerland and Liechtenstein. On 27 March 2013, it began being carried by British Forces Broadcasting Service BFBS, to members of HM Forces and their families around the world, replacing the BFBS2 TV channel, which already carried a selection of BBC2 programs. It shares a channel with CBBC, which broadcasts from early morning until the early evening. Topic. Accessibility The BBC announced in May 2008 that it had achieved its aim for all programming to have subtitles for viewers with hearing difficulties. These are available on the BBC Red button, and until 23 October 2012, via the CFAX Teletext service. The BBC also offers audio description on some popular programs for visually impaired viewers as well as sign language interpretation on some of its programs for deaf and hard of hearing viewers. The percentage of the BBC's total television output with audio description available is 10%, having been increased from 8% in 2008. Topic. BBC 2 HD. Originally, programs from BBC Two were shown in high definition on the dedicated BBC HD channel, alongside programs from BBC Three and BBC Four, as well as some select series from CBBC and CBeebies. However, in plans outlined by the Director General Mark Thompson on 6 October 2011, BBC HD would close to be replaced by BBC Two HD, a high-definition simulcast of BBC Two that would work much the same way as BBC One HD. This move allowed the corporation to save £2.1 million, used to count towards its budget deficit following the freezing of the license fee and the additional financial responsibility of addition services. On 19 February 2013, it was announced that BBC Two HD would replace BBC HD from 6.05 a.m. on 26 March 2013. Channel numbers for the BBC's HD channels also changed on Sky, to allow BBC One HD and BBC BBC 2 HD to sit side by side on channels 141 and 142 respectively on the EPG on the 16th of July 2013 the BBC indicated that it wants to launch Northern Irish Scottish and Welsh variations of BBC 2 HD however this would require the approval of the BBC Trust with a proposal due to be presented within 6 months on the 10th of December 2013 BBC 2 HD was swapped with the SD channel in England on Sky's EPG for HD subscribers. In October 2018, the BBC announced that regional variants of BBC Two HD in Wales and Northern Ireland would launch at the end of November that year on terrestrial, satellite Wales only, and iPlayer. BBC Two HD in these regions were swapped with the SD channel on Sky's EPG for HD subscribers. Due to the impending launch of the new BBC Scotland channel in February 2019, replacing the opt-outs on BBC Two Scotland, no Scottish HD variant was required. Topic. See also History of BBC television idents List of television stations in the United Kingdom